Alright folks, so um, Flight Test just did a, a, a very fun video. Alex uh, Zavada got into, uh, the, into the world of designing his own uh, UMX airplane. So, uh, great job Alex, good to see you joining Team UMX on all that. Um, this, is, this is now your nemesis. So this is the, the Carbonat 19, it's a um, model we designed a while back. It's kind of uh, similar to the UMX Whippet, except it has fittings up here for a rocket pod. Very successful airplane. Uh, guys in the rocketry world are flying these, really liking them. What I decided to do was demonstrate that we can kind of do the same thing. I've kind of cheated a little bit. Uh, my electronics are still being run off of a 30 milliamp LiPo. Um, but for our power system, we've got a pair of capacitors in parallel, uh, just because I have some small ones. So these are two farad capacitors, so we've got a total of four farads. Uh, these are rated for 2.7 volts, so I'm going to charge this off a single cell LiPo. Do not repeat this, guys. Do not, um, because the, these can explode kind of catastrophically if you're not careful. This is a very, very small um, cordless uh, motor, much smaller than what Alex was using, driving the, uh, the Ladybird propellers that you can get off of uh, Banggood. I believe this is a, um, a 6.5 millimeter motor. Uh, I think that's what it is. It's, it's very small. Uh, so, what we're going to do here is we're going to give this a test glide because I have to put the transmitter down to launch this. So, Alright, so my CG is a little far aft, um, so this could get interesting. Sorry. So, I think what I'm going to do is do this where I kneel down all awkward like. And we're going to have to charge this right-handed. You can tell this was done very spur of the moment. I have not thought this all out. Alright, so it sort of flies. Sort of. Let's try again. So we're going to try this a little bit differently this time. Give myself a little more height. This is grossly, grossly underpowered. And we've got a storm coming in here. Oh, that's fun. Folks, you know it's windy when that thing gets blown backwards. Because that thing has a wide speed envelope. Let's yeah. uh, try it again. Okay. So uh, we're going to give this another shot. Let's see how this goes. Um, I'm going to step a little further out here. I did not get that charged up all the way. It is so unhappy. Alright, so um, we're going to try one more time here. Oh, it is too windy. I'm going to cheat. I hope I get away with this. Let's see here. Doing that one more time, that was kind of fun. Okay, so so Alex's goal was that he could fly it around and then he could catch it. So I've completed that goal. Um, so I'm going to show you the setup real quick. 
Um, so this is our motor. We're mounted with about 10 degrees down thrust, so we're facing through the CG. Uh, I have cracked the back of the wing. I don't even know how I did that, but anyway. Um, our CG is all the way back here, which is not where you need to be. Uh, and I just taped my capacitor bundle here. Got a GST in series, uh, or in parallel with the motor, so I can charge it up that way. Um, sketchiest way ever to do it, but it gets it done. Anyway, y'all, uh, in calmer weather, <laughs> this would actually work pretty good. Uh, ideally, a little smaller, lighter glider. I mean, this, the, the issue is, this airplane is not ideal for this because this is designed to go about 150 miles an hour and so it's built strong to handle that. So if you build it lighter, um, it would it would do quite well with that. Uh, so anyway, there's there's some shenaniganery for y'all. Y'all have a nice day. Alright, so I uh, decided to add one more thing on this, uh, but first of all, hope show them what, what's bearing down on us. <laughs> Black clouds. So, uh, yeah, it's fun. That's coming this way fast. Um, so, this is, the, um, this is the Sandpiper 18. This is one of Brad's designs. He actually built this and gave it to me. Really sweet rig, and I feel bad using it for a test bed, but it's perfect for this, and... Besides, it was one of his airplanes that was used in the original idea. Um, this is actually thermal bait right here. So this, Brad's planes are, are too light to really, really stretch back on the rubber. But on this, because they're so light, they're perfect. They float like crazy. So I've just done the same setup as before. I've got my capacitor under here. I actually set the CG with that to offset the weight of the motor. I uh, gave this a tiny bit of up elevator. And now let's see what it does. That was bad on my part. All right, let's take that, try that one more time. See if I can get my hand out of the way of it. And that's some awful air right there. Okay, let's try this one more time. It's getting sketchy to do this. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Ah. Alright. One more go at this nonsense. Oh, seriously! It's too windy. That is such a terribly out of trim airplane. <laughs> okay, so anyway, as you see there, you gotta build them light. Um, that motor is, is too small for that airplane. Uh, if you, we'll include a link down below uh, to a video of an, a properly configured airplane flying on that setup. And it's, it's much lighter and it flies quite a while. I flew it up at Lakehurst and was getting it about, um, oh, 70 or 80 feet up in there. I mean, I've gotten it that high out, out here, but I mean, at Lakehurst, it really would just float and float and float. Uh, so anyway, there you have it. Some shenanigans for you for with uh, capacitor-powered airplanes. Um, so there may be some more developments on that coming soon. I'm not sure, and I, I'm not... Uh, at liberty to fully discuss it, but suffice it to say, there may be some more capacitor shenanigans coming in the very near future. So, see y'all later. You rolling? Uh huh. Wow, there we go.
and down. <laughs>